This is part two of our video that presents a hello world example of parallel computing using our PC. Let's first have a demonstration. We have three server machines at IP addresses uh, 133, 182, 148, 91, and uh, 92, 93. So we start uh, a server at each of the machines. So uh, we have started three servers and uh, we start the client uh, by this command dot when one three nine dot one eight two dot one four eight dot ninety one Okay, so you can see that uh, the servers uh, return the random numbers and the client prints all this out. Okay. Now, uh, let's see how the, this was done. See the servers also print out the 10 random numbers by themselves okay, and they return them to the client. Now we have implemented this random number generator. It XIT is computed by server I at time step uh, T uh, from previous values at time step T minus one okay, or T plus one from T. Okay. We have considered an example of n equals three as we have discussed in uh, the part one video okay. the xi value at the next time step t plus one is calculated from the current uh, value a xi and uh, the adjacent neighbors values x x minus one and x uh, i plus one at time step t uh, according to this equation, okay, uh, x i t plus one equals eleven times x i minus one t plus thirteen okay, uh, times x i t plus five x i t plus one t mod thirty one. So in our implementation, a client makes a remote uh, procedure call, sending adjacent values to uh, the server. Okay. 
a time step t okay, to server and uh, it server calculates uh, the value the, uh, at time step t plus one and sends it back okay, as shown in this diagram okay, like the uh, server s0 okay, gets uh, x1 x2 uh, and it has x0 and then calculates uh, x0 t plus one and sends it back okay, to the client Okay, S1, it calculates uh, X1 uh, T plus 1 okay, from X0, X2 T okay, and similar for uh, X2 T okay, it returns uh, X2, X2 T plus 1 okay, and uh, receiving X0 T, X1 T So after the client has gathered all three surface results it makes the next step RPC and then sending new adjacent values. The client uses a thread to communicate with a server, totally creating free threads. The barrier problem solution is used to synchronize the free threads. As we have discussed in part one, the implementation of the server code is uh, straightforward. So here's the server code. So this uh, the server code is the uh, straightforward implementation of the, the equation. Okay. for the client call a client code we pass in the host names of the uh, servers so we have a uh, free servers here server host 1 host 2 host 3 and we save them in uh, the array host so we have ID numbers uh, 0, 1, 2. So that means uh, host 0 is our first host, host 2 is the second one, uh, host 2 is the third one. Okay. And uh, we're creating three frets, okay, n equals 3 here, using SDL create fret and passing in the ID, okay, this I. So 0, 1, 2 uh, in, and as an ID number in each, each time a thread is created. So thread 0 is associated with host 0, uh, thread 1 is associated with host 1, uh, 2 is associated with host 2. Okay. And uh, in a program, variable Q is a condition variable used in the code barrier for synchronization. Okay. Mutex is a lock used in the, uh, the barrier routine. So at time step 0, xi0 is uh, initiated, uh, initialized, initialized okay. uh, using the random number generator RAM here yeah, okay so at the very beginning okay, xi equals RAM uh, mod 31 okay, and uh, so each thread okay, will contact um, a server this is our thread. So this is the code uh, for the thread. And uh, at the end of at the end the random numbers from each server are printed. Okay. 
So here's the flexible tin. The data passed in is the ID number 0 or 1 or 2 of the server I minus 1. And uh, I plus 1. Is uh, I minus one I I plus one will give us uh, x I minus one and I plus one. Okay, that's x left x right, okay. as you can see in this code. Okay. So x left equals x I minus one. So I minus one uh, is calculated uh, by ID minus one, okay, mod n basically, and I plus one is ID plus one uh, mod n. And so we have the x right and x left. And then uh, the x values of this thread uh, from this server okay, is uh, returned by the, the remote procedure call. So we, call, we pass in the host, uh, host name okay, associated with the ID 0, 1, or 2. And also we pass in the uh, x left, x y, basically x minus one, uh, sorry, x i minus one, x i plus one, okay. and uh, we print out uh, its values and save that uh, in this array RNS. Okay. And barrier is for synchronization. So the uh, the thread uh, is blocked here until other two threads have finished, have returned the value. Okay. So this is the barrier code. Okay. It is a solution to a uh, barrier problem. Okay, that's uh, typical. And uh, here's the code for the random procedure, rand uh, po one. So this uh, rand po one is with the remote procedure call to the host, okay. and uh, this code is mostly generated by the IDL compiler RPC gem. We only assign the uh, x left, x right uh, to the program struct uh, properly. And, uh, this x left equals x l. We pass in x y equals x r. And the get next ram one. Okay, this is the actual call to the remote server, and uh, the remote server will return the result. Okay, and then uh, we return the result uh, to uh, uh, the thread. Okay, to the thread here. Okay, and save it in this array. So that's uh, what uh, you have seen, the 10 random numbers. In your make file, uh, you have to add uh, this to the library. Because we have to link uh, with the SDL library and the pfret and also MySLTI RBC. I can show this to you. Remote O, so the remote uh, the optic files, and now minus F make so it um, it works again. So again, the, you issue this uh, execution, and uh, it returns uh, the random numbers from the servers. Okay. So this is a a simple example of the compu parallel computation using uh, RPC. Yeah. So you can try this uh, yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye.